today would um, be looking at iteration and um, that's like the follow-up after last week's um, discussion on functions. So oh, oh, sorry, last... Ve sorry. Yeah, yeah. vectors. Yeah, no, no, sorry. no worries. Vectors. And um, I, I have to say that um, before I could start this um, chapter, I had to go over the entire section, um, functions, vectors, pipes, or piping, um, uh, so that I would um, have a better understanding of what um, this section is all about. And um, uh, I certainly apologize for the, um, for the glitch as caused by my system, but I would also like to mention that perhaps we might not be able to finish this chapter today. So maybe um, we'd continue, um, we should finish next week because it's a bit much. And I also feel uh, we shouldn't rush it because um, we have a lot to learn from it. And um, it's like one of the things why we are actually here. So I'm of the opinion, we might have to take it, you know, like um, part one and part two. So we'll take the part one today and then would continue then the, the part two next week. Is that okay by you? Yes, yes, sure. Uh, so, okay. Sounds good. Okay, so um, so today we would um, be talking on iteration and this has to do with um, reducing duplication um, as it was mentioned during um, functions. And um, the, the general idea here is that when we write a function, we should try as much as possible to make sure that we reduce duplication and then we reduce the um, copying and pasting. Um, I think I'm, I'll soon be on my system now. So we should reduce duplication as much as possible. And also we should reduce copying and then um, pasting. Um, today we'll be going over um, iteration, which is um, chapter 21 in um, R for data science. And um, I'd want to say this again, I certainly apologize for starting late. Um, I had slight issues with my system. And the purpose why we need to iterate, you know, it's because we need to make, we need to do things um, efficiently. And then we need to also do it faster. And then we also need to reduce um, duplication. These are some of the things that, you know, were made mention in the preamble here. and. Um, a, a, a tool that could do that, that could reduce duplication, you know, is um, iteration. And um, this helps to do the same thing, you know, in, um, um, into, um, by repeating this, you know, rather than repeating the same process, it helps to break to, uh, in a way, reduce the complexity in the process and also make, it makes the whole thing uh, more compact and chiefly it reduces, um, duplication. And here we have um, two types of um, iteration that we'll be looking at. We'll be looking at um, imperative, and then we'll be looking at functional, which here is listed as the imperative programming. And then we have um, the functional programming. The, imper the imperative programming has to do with um, the for loops. And um, yeah, the for loops, while the functional programming, I know, is more like um, using functions you know, inside um, functions. And that would also consider subsequently. Here would uh, basically would be focusing on, we still be using our library uh, package, which is um, tidyverse. And um, like I said, it's divided into two parts, um, the imperative programming and then the functional programming. For the imperative programming, we have um, the for loops and the while loops. And then for the other one, which is um, the functional programming, we look at it when we get to that um, section. Um, here, here we have an example of the for loop. And um, we are to imagine um, this table um, is a data frame. You know, and then we have A, B, C, D, and um, a typical example I would want to paint it. Um, unfortunately, I will still have to start my R Studio so that I can really show um, some some things. Um, here, if you imagine the 
um, empty cars. Do you still remember the um, the empty cars um, data sets that we use that we've been using in this um, series? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's okay. uh, the default set. Yeah, that you exactly. Can use from our yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So so the empty cars as um, columns of um, um, yeah as different columns and. Um, we can compute the mean of those of each of those column. Um, yeah, we can compute the mean of each of those column. And that's the same thing that has been done here. So we have a table, and then we are computing the mean of each of the columns. So here we have median. So all we do is to call um, the, the, the table against the column, and then we have the median, and then, and so on and so forth. But this in itself is breaking the rule, the rule, the first rule of thumb that we should reduce um, copying and pasting. And here we've already copied and pasted four times. So we should not, here it's saying that we should never copy and paste more than twice. No. Instead, what could be done here is to create a loop. And um, the kind of loop we are creating here is a for loop. And this is the general structure. This here is the general structure of a for loop. So here we have you no know, what is going to be the um, what's going to be the resultant, what's going to be the result of um, the the process or the problem that we we are facing or that we are trying to you know, solve. So the, the here is the output line. And what are we here saying? We are saying that, okay, the output is going to be a vector and then it's going to be double. That means it's going to carry um, decimals and then column because it's in column here and then it's data frame. Yeah, so it's referring to the previous, um, to pre previous, um, um, it's referring to the previous slide here. Here, so this is the D DF. So, and here now, is actually where we have the sequence. So we have the four, that's why we call it a for loop. So we have four, that's, I here is like index, you no. Know, in sequence along, this is the name of the function here. That's a um, sequence along DF, that means for every, you no, know, along the DF, you no, know, this index should go along the DF. And then what should it do? Oh, sorry. And what should it do? It should um, output it for each of the columns and then it should give us um, the median. So this is the body. And then we have um, the output. So this, um, this structure is very, very important. And this actually is what um, the for loop does. And um, we have here, the, the component is broken down. We have the output, and this is um, the structure of the output. You have um, um, a vector, and then we are telling you know, the output what kind of vector. It should be a double, and then the length of the vector, which is um, here, is a um, column, and then the DF. And this here, we are saying that before we start the loop, we must always allocate sufficient space for the output, you know, which is very important. And then also, now we have a vector. So here we could have logical, we could have integer, we could have double, we could have character, and then the length of the vector, which is the general structure for the output here. And then we have the sequence. The index, for each index, you no know, sequence along for each index, you no know, within this TF. And this determines what the loop, what to loop over. So each run we assign i to a different value. I know it's they are saying we could say it or no, depending on what we are convenient with. So um, yeah, so that's going to go along um, each of those um, each of those columns, and then it's going to give us an output. I would want us to try this. Um, um, I would want us to try this in R. And um, I would really want us to take our time so that we don't rush it, so that we get the full gist here. So um, I'm trying to open my R Studio. Okay, so um, what, what I want to do is that we use the same uh, structure 
and then pass it into the empty cars and then see um, what the output is going to look like. And that is going to give us an idea of um, how you know, the for loop works generally. So that's, um, okay, so, okay. Sorry, I'm a bit clumsy today, sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. No worries, technology always. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. So Okay, so um, okay, so so here, can you see my art studio now? Yep, now I can see it. Okay, so. Okay. Can you just uh, zoom in a bit? You, yeah, I will. It's quite small. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will. I will do that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I will go back to the R Studio, but I don't want to keep wasting time. So um, that's what that's the general structure of um, of um, the for loop, and um, what I want to show is um, how we can um, recreate such uh, within um, the R Studio, so that we see how exactly you know um, it's uh, it behaves, and then maybe we can also do some hands on on our own. So let me know when you see my R Studio page now. Yes, sure. Okay. So let me just um, run this tidy verse. Okay. 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 So let's say we have um, R here. Okay, so um, the same line of code, then we have it here. Um, you can call um, um, empty cars, mm, okay, here, yeah. let me see, empty cars, I hope, here, uh, yeah. empty cars, okay, empty cars, okay, hopefully, Okay, so this now gives us the median across each of the um, empty cars column. And um, if we do this, let's say we have this, um, something like empty cars, not sure this is gonna work. Okay, anyway, so what um, this um, structure for for loop, what it has done or what it's doing here is to go along, you no, know, along each sequence. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's to go along each of this column and then calculate the median. So basically that's, um, that's what it's doing, which in a way is, um, 
far better than um, at least in terms of parsimony is far better than what we had, you know, what we were doing, uh, median, this, median, this, uh, and um, yeah. So um, here too, we can do, we can, we can actually do the same here. If we do median, um, I think median um, uh, MPG, I think it should give us, Okay. Um, okay. Median MPG. That might be something like um, median. Okay. I think I should call empty cars at the beginning. Okay. So, yeah. Oh. Okay, I'll come back to this. But um, what I'm trying to say is um, we can actually do median for each of the columns and then um, it's going to return the median. And however, that's not um, um, working smart. So the for loop performs uh, the operation and then you know it runs across each of the columns and then calculates the median and then gives us an output that is um, a double. So, um, but this this um, structure is very important to to note, and then it's um, would um, begin to use it um, as we make progress in uh, in the in the in, in the study. So we have our first exercise here, which says uh, write write for write for loops to compute the median of every column in empty cars, and I think uh, we've already done that. You no know, compute the mean of every column in empty cars. And then the time, I mean, the type of column of each column in NYC flights. This compute the number of unique values in each column of iris. I I have some of them in my R Studio, but let me be sure that it's still there, so that I wouldn't be wasting time again. I want to be sure that it's still there. No, I copied it from the solutions. Okay, so it's still there. W would you mind to see it, or I should just go on? Um. Uh, well, it, it's pretty clear until now. So I mean, okay, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um. So it's it's basically the same thing. Would just um. This is going to be our data frame. Would um. Would put um this into it, and then determine the type. Since here we want to know the type, so rather than using um double, for um. Rather than using double for the vector, uh, for the vector structure, we will now be using list. So if we use list, then we have um, it's going to tell us the type of each of the column, you no, know, in in New York flights, you no know, flights, and then we can also do um, unique values. I think that should be integer for for iris, and then we can look at um, the other exercises uh, and see what um, we have we have to do. Um, for loops, you no know, for loop variations. Now, now we know um, how the structure is. We know we need to have an output, and then we also need to have um, a sequence, which is um, the four, you no, know, the i or the index in the sequence along the data frame or the table we are considering, and then we need to have the output and how we should pick each of the index or each each of the columns, you no, know, as the case may be. And since we have that now, um, there are four variations that we need to take cognizance of. Uh, there are four vari variations on the basic theme of the for loop. You know, we can modify an existing object rather than creating a new object. We can loop over names. You no, know? it's not every time you have to do you no know, indices, you no know, or, or index as the case may be. We can also loop over names and then handling outputs of unknown length and then handling sequences of unknown length. Uh, we'll break this down you know, in the next few subsections. Now, here, modifying an existing object. So um, here we have the table, which is what we've been working with coming um, from the other, from the previous sections. And then we want to do, um, we want to rescale. So we have rescale here, which is the 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 for, um, 
the, the problem, we want to rescale, and then the function here is x, and the function, it's, uh, the rescale, the function, and then we have um, the RNG, which is, um, this is now actually the, um, what we want uh, this rescale to do. Now, range of x, you know, we want it to calculate the range of x. And how is it going to calculate the range of x? You use x, you no know, minus RNG1 divided by, you no know, RNG2 minus RNG1. So this is going to rescale. And then is, I think the value should be between zero and one. So um, if you have this here, if you have this uh, function here, so we can do something like this, df, um, uh, marry it with A, and then ask it to rescale you know, this same df with A, and then we can repeat this. But we already know that um, repeating is violating um, our rule of thumb. So what, what can we do? So um, we, already have, you know, we already have the output, which is the same as the input. Then we can think of the sequence. How do we want the sequence you know, to look like? How are we going to do the iteration? So we use the same um, sequence here for you no know, every index. You no, know, in this um, data frame, you should sequence along it. And then, what's the output? What's the output? Uh, what's it, what should it look like? That means that it should rescale. And you pick each of the, you should pick each of of uh, of the elements, and um, I would um, I would just quickly take us back into R to see how this um, looks like um, here. Yeah. So okay, so in R, so we have this. I I guess you can see my screen now. Yes, yes, I can see your okay. studio now. Okay, so we have, okay, so this is done. Then here, this is the sequence. So now we can now, um, if, if we join this with, um, with the output, if we join this, with the output and then uh, with the yeah with the output and then we put um what we wanted to do or the the function then we we'll see um, what exactly um is going to be um the output of what has been rescaled i think if i do this rescale one maybe we should have Because I've not provided um, the inputs, it should be this. Okay, it should be this coming. And then, okay. So if I have this here, okay. So this. The function range. Okay, something is still missing. Okay, so this DF, so these are data frame. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Do, do you know why it's not working? I'm sorry uh, if I know why this is happening. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I don't see very well your code because it's quite small. Um, oh, sorry, so. sorry. No, no, no worries. That's why I told you before to zoom in. I mean, I can I can see, but it's pretty hard. Let, let me see. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, oh, is now it better now? Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I sincerely no apologize. I guess I've just been a bit clumsy today. Okay, so um, yes, I guess this. Where is the code chunk? This one? Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
-hmm. So I'm coming back here. This is the the chunk that you ran before, right? Yeah, this so yeah one. this is the one. Yeah, this is the one we okay, want to work with. The new one. So okay. yeah, so I think this is why it's not um, double close. So I should have DF here. So I think now it should. Still not doing okay. So we have the body, we have the sequence. Okay, it should perform good double and call DF for I use along yes, DF PF I scale. And what's the output of this? Uh, can you wh what do you get? It should it should give us um okay because the scale is not defined it should give us um a rescale which is this it should mm -hmm. give us a rescale which is this which should give us a value between um zero and one for each of the um elements in the data frame but um let, let, i wouldn't want to waste so much time on that so yeah okay. I, think, I i i'm not sure how how we would make it work so something okay. seemed funny on the last line of code but i i cannot figure out what okay how to fix it. yeah okay. so um okay so what i was trying to do is um, i was trying to bring in this um this for loop into the rescale so that uh, we can run it and see how no, it makes it um, better than doing it um, this way, than doing it this way, but I would um, definitely come back to that maybe next week. So um, typically we'll be modifying a list or data frame with this sort of loop. So we have to remember that um, we, we use two square brackets, not just one single bracket. That means here, we're using two square brackets. And then this, if you remember from the last class, this is like trying to be specific. So for each column or for each um, list, you should um, perform a certain um, operation. So it's trying to um, streamline it into a particular column or a particular list, and then asking it to, part, uh, to perform a certain operation. Now we have looping patterns. You know, the, the, there are three basic ways for us to loop over a vector. So far, we've seen how to loop over um, numerical indices. However, we can also loop over elements. So rather than saying for i in sequence along, so we say for x in you know, so, so, so. And this, you no, know, they gave reasons for that. And then we can also loop over names for, you no, know, for this in names. And then we provide where the name, where the names are stored. And then we can loop over that and then have um, our output. You no, know, so this is a um, result. The vector is going to return a list and then the length no is um, x and then names of the results and then names no within the x so iteration over numeric indices is the most general form because given the position you, you can extract both the name and the value so here now we can do for i in a particular sequence no in a particular data frame we also want to extract the names for each of the sequence, for each of the um, columns or the list, and then also want it to, accomp to be accompanied by, by the values. So this is um, when we loop over names, you no, know, this is how the structure you know, is, going to, is going to look like. And um, I think we'd see um, several examples. And then we have um, unknown output length. And this was also given, if we don't know the, um, the length of the output, then there's a way we can also um, write out the structure of the for loop. And then it's going to give us you know, the output irrespective of whether we know um, the length or not. Now, um, now it's okay. this saying the better solution of this one here is to combine a single vector after the loop you no, know, after the loop is done, you know, this is just um, trying to tell us what um, happens if we don't know the um, the length of um, of the sequence. So here, 
it's saying we have used them um, on list to flatten out because um, if the list is endless, then we can try to flatten it out, you know, into a single into a single vector. And a stricter option is to use um, the poor flattening underscore DBL, although it might throw an error if the input isn't a list of doubles. And then um, reasons were given as to how you know, that might come into play or what might happen. However, sometimes we might not know how long the input sequence should run for. This is, a, this is actually common when we do you know, simulations. For example, we might want to loop until we get you know, perhaps three heads in a row. And um, to do that sort of iteration within the loop, we, we can't do that sort of iteration within the for loop. Instead, we have to create a while loop and then we set a condition in the while loop and then we have a body. So here we have a while loop, we have a while, and then we have the condition and then we have the body of um, of the for loop. We have the body of um, of the loop rather. So a while loop is more general than a for loop because we can rewrite any for loop as a while loop, but we can't rewrite any while loop as um, as a for loop. And um, here we have for high, you know, in the sequence along each of the column, then we have the body. Um, if i is this, then we want it to do you know, a certain uh, operation and then it's going to be incremental. So I now becomes incremental. That means it's going to be adding, you know, it's going to be increasing by one. And then we have you know, the loop going on and on until it satisfies the condition. And now here is an example of how we could do a while loop. And then we find out how many times it takes to get three heads in a row. So um, the function is a flip. And then the sample is a um, tail or head. However, because um, we can't, we have to create an open, uh, like an open, um, yes, an open list or an open space for the function to be dropping um, the output. So here we have for flips, and then we, here we have for heads. So while heads is less than three, then if you no know, flip is equals to one, is equals to add or is exactly add, then um, yeah, if if flip is add, then yes, if flip is add, then flips we keep increasing, then um, sorry, I'm coming on to be able to explain this or oh, can you help out here sorry uh yeah i mean i what you want to do here so you have created a list an empty list and then you because you want the output of the while function that you create to go somewhere right yeah, so exactly. you actually say that when n heads this list is uh less than three whenever you have flip uh, equals equals h so it's exactly h uh, you add to the n heads one else in in case uh, that this is uh, this is does not hold true. Uh, you keep the n heads as zero, and then you add one to flips. Exactly. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So um so th that's no um yeah so um that would um. Um, give us how many times we have, um, then it's going to solve um, how many times we'll have, uh, we can get three heads in, in a row, which um, the answer here is um, 21. Then we have exercises here. Um, and um, even though I would have loved us to do, or to go through some of these exercises rather than just um, um, glossing over them. But um, I mean, today has been a bit clumsy. What I planned is a bit falling out of hand. So, um we can actually go through this on our own and see what oh, is happening yeah whatever okay. whatever suits you i mean if you if you want to close up or um, continue with some exercises because we have 10 minutes so we can continue next time okay so um so we can just look at some um, loops and functionals um you know like i said uh, we have um, the four loops 
and then we have um, um, the the main the main um, thing the main the, or the thematic um, um, bodies under uh, imperative programming. We have um, the um, the the for loops, and then we've we've treated the while loops, and here now we are going to look at um, the for loops versus the functionals. No, for loops are not as important in R as they are in other languages because R is a functional programming language. And that this means that it's possible to wrap up for loops in a function and call that function instead of using you know, the for loop directly. So what they are trying to say here is um, rather than you can actually have, um, you can develop a function and then use another function inside the, the, the for loop and then wrap everything together. So um, here now, imagine here, this is uh, the output. We've done this before. Um, the vector is a double, then this, this is the length. And then we have um, every I going along the column. And then the output is to give us the mean of each of the columns. And then this is going to be the output. Uh, but we realize that, you are going to, that we are going to compute the means of every column pretty frequently. So we need to extract it out into a function. So this is how, no, it's now done. So we have a colon mean, which is now a function along within the data frame. Then we have the same um, output that we have. Then we have the mean as a function here. The mean here as a function here. So this is um, uh, the functional, uh, this is like a functional uh, loop. But then you think that it's also be helpful rather than computing the mean alone, that we need to compute the median. And so we have, so we can do column median and then we can do column standard deviation. But here, the problem now is that uh, we are doing copy and pasting, which also violates um, the rule of function. So how do we, Compute mean, median, and start deviation rather than using three different functions. Um, so, how do we go about that? Here is one way. So, we have um, column summary, and then we have function, and then we have DF, which is the data frame or the table we are considering. Then we have the font. The phone, if you remember this phone, um, why we are doing, um, why we are doing um, geom point, uh, what is that called now? GG plots and all that. We use this phone function to calculate um, mean, median, uh, and, the, uh, and I think mode. So we are calling this function now into you know, this column summary function. And then we have the outputs, this same um, structure. However, rather than saying, either mean or median or star division here. So we are calling out this function here to, to perform its role. And then we have um, out, we have out here. So we are, that means we are returning back here and then we close you know, the entire function. So we can call column summary and then DF median. So we are saying compute the median within the phone function and then it's going to give us this. Then we can say column summary, compute the mean within the phone function, and then it's going to output, it's going to output this. And this becomes very efficient, especially if um, we have to work with uh, large data sets, and then we have to um, write you know, a simple code that would extract um, mean, median, um, and uh, maybe side deviation or mode. Well, uh, as long as uh, that um, function can be performed you know, within this phone function, then we will we, be able to you know, pass the comment and then the output would, um, will be provided. So the idea of passing a function to another function you know, is an extremely powerful idea. And it's one of the obvious, and it's one of the behaviors that makes R a functional programming language. Now, it might take a while to wrap our head around the, this idea, but it's worth the investment. Now, the rest of the chapter will be learning the poor package, which um, Actually, it's actually a very useful package, but it also requires us you know, to be, it's, it's require one to go over it and know how the structure 
you know, looks like, and then its special um, its special functionalities, and then what it can be used to do. So the goal of using the pop function instead of for loops is to allow us to break common list manipulation challenges into independent pieces. And um, how do we mean? Now we can solve the problem of a single element of the list. How can we solve the uh, problem of a single element of the list? Once you've solved the problem, then pod takes care of generalizing your solution to every element in the list. So, so it's, it's still the problem of iteration. We want to try and reduce duplication. And that's what this pod function is doing. And if you are solving a complex problem, how can we break it down into you know, bite-sized pieces that allow us to advance one step at a time towards a solution? So this pore function you know, allows us to you know, get a lot of small pieces and then compose everything together using you know, the pipe structure. You know, this ends makes it easier to solve new problems. And also, it makes it easier to understand our solutions to old problems when we need to reread you know, even old old code uh the, okay I, I don't know if you have any question at this moment or any clarification or any addition um, or no i think i think we're, we're good actually so okay so um i'd want to apologize once again for being so clumsy today it's um uh, no I, worries, I, I, I got mean. i got thrown off because of yeah. uh, the the um the system each so um i i it's, would it's want right. us, don't, don't worry at all yeah I want us to start from the map functions next week. Um, I'll be better. Yeah, I, that's I think a good plan. I, I, yeah, yeah. So um, mm -hmm. I would also try to uh, rehash some of the things we've done today, and then we'd start from map map functions, which is actually within the poor package. Um, I hopefully, maybe Mr. Daniel will be around next week, and then we'd also have um, a more exciting class. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you next week. Yes. Yeah, Bye. Nice. Thank you Bye. for the presentation. Yeah, you're welcome.